Bliskowice was the second of two Grom-class destroyers built for the Polish Navy. Grom translates to Thunderbolt, and Bliskowice translates to Lightning, so as with Taiho, these ships actually have very cool names. They are, of course, Thunderbolt and Lightning. Presumably they were meant to be a very, very frightening thing. No word on if the Polish Navy commissioned a ship called Galileo, repeatedly. At the time of their construction, in the late 1930s, they were two of the most powerful destroyers in the world. Poland had previously ordered ships from France, but seeing that the British were upgunning and upsizing their own destroyers, these two were ordered from the United Kingdom. As a result, in many ways the ships would resemble the tribal class in British service, however they were one gun short, rather than having eight 4.7 inch guns, the Groms would mount seven 4.7 inch guns with two twin turrets super firing at the rear and a twin turret super firing over a single turret at the front of the ship. However, they were not British guns, they were in fact Swedish 50 caliber quick firing guns, the same that the Polish Navy had previously ordered for one of their mine layers. The rest of their armament consisted of four 40mm anti-aircraft guns in a pair of twin mounts, eight heavy machine guns in four twin mounts, and two triple torpedo tubes mounted on the center line, along with the requisite depth charge throwers required for anti-submarine warfare. With her engines generating 54,000 shaft horsepower, Bliskovica could move through the water at a rather sprightly 39 knots. Two more ships to a slightly improved design, Huragan and Orkan, meaning Hurricane and Windstorm, were ordered for completion in 1939, but their construction was interrupted by World War II. As whilst the first pair of Groms would be built in the UK, the second pair had been planned to be built in Poland, which of course was the first victim of World War II. However, as World War II broke out, the Polish Navy could see the writing on the wall, and, like the Greek Navy, decided they were going to have no part in surrendering their ships to the Nazis, and the two destroyers would find themselves evacuated over to Britain to fight alongside the Royal Navy for as long as they possibly could. Grom would be lost fairly soon in 1940, but Bliskovica would survive with the first task at hand being refitting the ship to improve its stability, since the destroyers had been designed for the rather calmer waters of the Baltic, as opposed to the very rough waters of the North Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. Additional modifications included changes to the superstructure, the addition of a second searchlight, and the removal of the aft set of torpedo tubes to allow the carriage of a 3-inch anti-aircraft gun. The ship would also be rearmed since getting ammunition for the Swedish guns would be problematic, her seven 4.7-inch guns being replaced by four twin 4-inch guns from British stocks. With this main battery switch happening in December 1941, and the 13.2mm machine guns being replaced by four 20mm Orlikans, it was decided that the ship's anti-aircraft capacity was sufficient and the 3-inch anti-aircraft gun was removed again and the second set of torpedo tubes reinstalled. Bliskovic's career would be very active, starting the war in 1939 hunting U-boats, before heading over to Norway to shell German positions and shoot at German aircraft. She would then return to the English Channel to take part in co covering Operation Dynamo, the otherwise known as the successful evacuation of Dunkirk. Her sheer speed also made her very attractive as a fast convoy escort, as she was one of the few warships, even including destroyers, that could keep up with the fast troop transports that had been converted from the Atlantic cruise liners of the interwar period. In May 1942, the ship would find itself in dry dock undergoing an emergency refit in the yard where she'd been built on the Isle of Wight. And then 160 bombers appeared. These were Luftwaffe bombers, not RAF bombers, and so Bliskovica promptly opened fire. She was rather eager to get further revenge on the Germans, and as pretty much the sole heavy anti-aircraft battery in the town, she had to single-handedly hold off a good portion of Luftflot 3. She did this, firing her guns so rapidly and so quickly that they began to overheat and had to be doused with river water to keep operational. 
extra ammunition for the ship had to be ferried over the Solent from Portsmouth to keep her going, and all of this combined to force the bombers high, making her and the town a very difficult target, which she further compounded by generating a large smoke screen, which further obscured everything. This valiant defence left a deep impression on the townspeople, and there have been a number of commemorative events in the recent past in the town of Cowes, commemorating the Bliskovich's valiant defence and preservation of their town. She would spend most of 1943 in North Africa before transiting back to the UK to assist in the D-Day landings, taking part in the little-known Battle of Ushant against a force of Kriegsmarine destroyers shortly after the landings had been achieved. During this battle, one German destroyer was sunk and another was run ashore. Over the course of the war, she would damage a variety of U-boats, enemy ships, and a number of aircraft, shooting down at least four of them. Her final act related to World War II must have been the rather satisfying Operation Deadlight, where she, along with the destroyer HMS Onslow, would oversee the scuttling of over a hundred German U-boats. As both Bliskovica and Haida had served in the 10th destroyer flotilla during the Second World War, in July 2006 the two ships were twinned, with Haida of course being a preserved tribal class destroyer in Canada, and fortunately for everyone, the Bliskovica being a preserved museum ship in Poland. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.